All right, we're live. We're back. Welcome to the High Stakes Deals podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Locascio, and I'm here with my co-host, Greg. Greg Foster. We call him Clooney. He'll always be Clooney to us. <laughs> and we're joined today by someone really special, Jawan Arabaye. Jawan, thank you for being here. Pleasure to have. Pleasure to be here. Me. By the way, Jawan is a serial entrepreneur. He's involved in a number of businesses from sports management, music, real estate, CEO of Titan Investments. He's the real deal. And that was why we had to start off strong with the relaunch of me and Clooney's podcast, our, our podcast together, and uh, get the, the man, the myth, the legend here. So thank, thank you. Thank you for the edification. Appreciate that. Hey, anytime, man. So first of all, I think it's only appropriate that we pop a little bubbly. We did pop the bubbly, but why don't we do a little toast here? A little Just toast. to celebrate our friendship and the fact that we're all, you know, doing this, this is podcast. Our first uh, uh, class. Re- I like that. Relaunch. Hey, you know what? Juwan. <clears throat> pleasure. Juwan. Thank Salute. you. Appreciate it. Bam. Salute day. Oh, getting fancy. Mm. Mm. Rose, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't so, really so we sent we sent uh, uh, Greg to pick up the champagne. I never know with Greg if he's going to come back with a two hundred dollar bottle or a, a ten dollar bottle, depending on what kind of mood <laughs> yeah. he's in. I know he's going to look for avocado toast <laughs> and you know and, and a spritzer of some sort. Yeah. Well, listen, this you is the man. best I, they had, so I had to buy it. You, you know? did great. You did I great. didn't have a lot of choices. You did a great <laughs> job, man. So, so Juwan, a um, lot of things we want to unpack today. I'm really excited about this. I guess maybe to start off, why don't you give the audience a little bit of a High level view, you know, summarize kind of who you are and, and what you do. Um, okay. And then we can kind of maybe dive into your past and how you started. Right on. Well, appreciate that. First and foremost, I want to thank you too for having me. You know, I mean, great edification. My, my boys, my business partners. So thank you. Pleasure to be here. Um, as Brandon mentioned, my name is Juwan Aragbae. I consider myself a serial entrepreneur. I work in a collect, uh, um, collaboration of, a, of spaces from real estate, sports management. And um, also music. I have a small record label with a few partners of mine, and we have an artist that's um, he's pretty pretty buzzing in LA right now. So yeah, you know, just you know, trying to just push the culture forward and uh, make sure we have investments along the way. Man, I love that. Yeah. So take us back to where. I mean, first of all, where did you grow up? Okay. Um, maybe maybe just give us a little intro to okay. to J- little Jawan and, yeah, and what yeah, was he, what was he like? Yeah. Man, so interesting. So. I'm of uh, Nigerian descent. I was born in Nigeria, uh, West African. I was born there. I was raised here uh, in California, LA, and uh, IE, just kind of both sides. Hey, fellow so, IE boy right here. Let's right. go. You know Let's up. go. Yeah. So between LA and IE, I was raised in California. I came to America when I was five years old. Um, my mom and my father, you know, they're hardworking individuals, as, as, as most uh, foreigners, in particular Nigerians, are. You know what I'm saying? Um, Dad's an entrepreneur, mother was also in real estate and also a nurse growing up. So um I always had a hustler's mentality, just seeing my parents, you know, just doing their thing. Um I played sports all through high school, played for the top AAU teams and uh had a had a partial scholarship to Cal State Northridge. What what was your favorite sport? Basketball, Football, basketball, okay. Yeah, nice. ba- I was a basketball player. You yeah. would think I'm a football player because of my size. I was gonna say but, yeah. you could be a I'm linebacker, actually, bro. Yeah, Come on, I'm man. I was actually a basketball player. I was, I was decent. My brother also played ball. Okay. So that's where the sports side <clears throat> I see. comes from. My, my brother was really good. Um, probably could have went pro if a few things went his way. Okay. Um, so the initial plan was to represent him growing up. Nice. So, um, ended up going to UNLV. Okay. Las Vegas. Las Vegas. College. Let's college. go. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Shout out Running Rebels, baby. Y'all know yeah. what's up. Um, so, so how, by the way, how was that? I mean, going to school in Vegas, that's got, I mean, any school, any college, by the way, I never went to college. I probably missed out on that life experience, but I'm imagining parties and, and all, all the shit that goes all down. All I said is sum it up. Going to school in Las Vegas was like the hangover <laughs> your entire time. Your entire time. Seriously. Yeah. Like, Greg luckily, may want to go back yeah. and enroll now. Luckily, luckily, oh, I graduated. No, thank you. you know what I mean? Luckily, I was fortunate to graduate. Yeah. I graduated with like a 3.0. Nice. You know wow. I always, nice job, man. I always took care of my business. Yeah. But I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah, there was some partying going down. Yeah. What, what made you go to UNLV? So initially, I went there for basketball. Um, oh, I, had okay. a, I, had a, I had a partial scholarship to college oh, nice. Northridge. But I thought I was better than what I was for some reason. Gotcha. So, hey, we all um, do. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so a coach who had recruited me at around the time, his name was Bill Baino. He was at UNLV. Nice. Um, but he said I could come in as a walk-on. 
Okay. By the time I was getting ready to come in as a walk-on, he got fired and went to another um, university. So I just still went to UNLV. I'm like, it's close to home. I didn't want to go too far. I'll yeah. go there and see if I could walk on with the next coach. Things didn't go my way, uh-huh. you know what I mean? But I ended up just going there for college, getting my degree. What, what okay. did you get your degree in? Communications. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, so what is there. communication? By the way, I'm very always very – so, again, I didn't go to college. But communications degree, what exactly – is it just the art of communicating? Is that yeah, – I mean, is yeah, it from the yeah, fundamental yeah, yeah. standpoint? Yeah. Uh, Bachelor of Arts, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, obviously, you know, there's marketing and stuff goes along yeah. in, that, in that as well. But, yeah, the art of communication. Um, I got that particular degree because I knew to be a sports agent at the time. That was one of the degrees that they recommended. I uh, see. Whether it was business yeah. or communications. Yeah. So my initial goal was to be a sports agent. It was. Yeah. Okay. Life took a weird turn that I ended up in that space. Yeah. Like 10 years later. Wow. Well, and so you, we could talk about that. You too. couldn't relate to a lot of these um, guys because you played sports in, yeah. in college, you know, UNLV college basketball. Yeah. How long did you play um, Jawan over at UNLV? I didn't play UNLV. Oh, you did yeah, not? Remember, yeah, I went there to try to play. Oh, yeah, I got you. I didn't play, but a lot, all my friends played. Okay. And I was very close niche to all the all athletes. Those guys. And you I know, got people you. took, uh, people gravitated towards me for whatever reason. Okay. So I just kept in touch with a lot of guys who played sports. Right. And, you know, whether it was pro or college. Yeah. So it ended, up, it ended up serving me yeah. down the line. Seems like a natural. By, by the way, I, I don't yeah. know if you if you know that Greg played sports as well in in college. He <laughs> he uh, did a lot of rollerblading. So <laughs> yeah. there you go, Greg. Unfortunately, that, that was, was his, a, yeah. that was his thing that on was the weekend not a, in the Olympics at the time. So well, let me I ask you guys it. a question because again, I didn't go to college. I'll say it again. Um, and and you guys did. And uh, you know, I've never needed a degree for what I've chosen to do. Um, although it probably would have been nice to have the feather in the cap. I'm not gonna lie. Um. And, and Greg and I are always talking about this as far as, you know, now that I have kids, it's like that question of like, will I really push that on them? Of course, I think in a way I will encourage it maybe, but I've seen so many people go to college and they just mess around. They get these BS degrees that don't, yeah. they don't do anything with and then they waste a bunch of money. And, and so I don't know, I'm a little torn about it. So I guess the question to you guys is from both your point of view, <coughs> is college worth it? Well, Should everybody go or only some people go? Have you guys personally used your degrees or do you think your degrees have, I, have made a difference in your careers or what do you guys think? Well, I, my, my opinion on it is I think everybody's different, Brandon. I yeah. think it's, it's, a, it's a good tool to have. It's, it helps in the developmental stages of, of a young, you know, young man, young woman. And I think it's, it has a lot of you know, beneficial properties. There are times when it can go bad you know, and, and um, doesn't work out. But I think overall, uh, default into to education, I think it's always a, a beneficial you thing. Think most kids need that extra layer of education some, that some high do. school doesn't really yes, prepare Yes, I enough. agree. You yeah. know, if you have a father who or a mother who has an ongoing business, and mm-hmm. I'll just use uh, one as an example, a fire sprinkler business. Yeah. You know, the, you've got a, a successful business. The kids seem like they could naturally fall into that business and start working for you. But, you know, college could also help them too. A lot yeah. of skills they pick up along yeah. the way. Do you want what do you So, mean? I mean, um, um, first and foremost, I think I'm pro education. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, my culture is extremely pro education, uh, us Africans. However, in 2024, I do believe traditional education like universities and colleges are overrated overrated what? expensive yeah, no expensive they're overrated and with the landscape of the internet and everything being at the at your fingertips i think college is overrated now if they reduce the cost of college right whole different story yeah but with that being said as greg mentioned it depends on the individual your maturity level yeah what are your plans in life what yeah. are your goals in life? Because right. no one's going to ever be mad at that you're educated. Right. right. Of course. It will right. never, it will never right. hurt you to be educated. You, you, can't, right. really, you can't be overeducated. You can't Let's be overeducated. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. if you're someone who you, you're a mature at age 18 or you want to go to trade school yeah. or you have a family business right. or you want to go be a profession, like yeah, going to like a, being a, a doctor right. or right. a lawyer, right. 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 Yeah, yeah. go to college. Yeah. yeah. But I will say this. Think about it, you know, Young young men and women watching this, think about it because at the end of the day, just the camaraderie and the contacts mm. and the network yeah. that you could build through college, especially a good university, yeah, they're in value. Well, uh, Juwan, well said. Like the socialization of it yes. all. You know, you're meeting different people yes. in classes, outside mm-hmm. classes, doing group studies, yeah. uh, group classes, and, and 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 so forth. That's what I mean. That's the devel- value, developmental yeah. stages are, yeah. are are really imperative to some young adults. Yeah. Um. You know, like we were talking earlier, uh, Juwan. You know, 
kind of like your DNA when you grow up from, from year one to year 15 or 16. You know, you're developing all these. Are you still growing uh, up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll never grow up. Yeah. Brandon. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think you're, you're developing yourself and, um, and, and college can help on that next development exactly. stages. Do you, do you guys think that uh, kids who are going to college should choose a college as wisely with the idea of, of, of where we can go to network and make those connections? I mean, is that, is that, in other words, you know, you go to a little community Community college and you get stuck there for eight years with a bunch yeah. of people that you know because yeah. community college should take what two years, two years. I, mean, I know i actually know people that have been there for like i feel yeah. like eight years i'm like what the yeah. hell are you guys still doing yeah. there but but i think the networking aspect to me that's the most interesting that's part a, of it making important. those connections yeah. because nobody really nobody really tells you how in the real world and you guys know this yes i mean even even how we all were able to connect together yeah yep. no one teaches you that component right that goes beyond business I go beyond your intellect level. Yep. Like your network, your network is extremely important to your success in the real world. Absolutely. And college could definitely propel that. Your your me. network is your net worth. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. So I'll, I'll, okay, so Juan, so uh, so take us past that. So you get through. <clears throat> so Vegas. I graduate. Yeah, yeah get graduate. Through Vegas, you know. Yep. What's next? Of, you hang out in Vegas? You head back to IE or LA or what's I it? I had a lot of fun in Vegas, yeah. you know. My <laughs> rebels, y'all know what's up with me, you know. <laughs> Juan's like, I gotta get the hell out of here. All right, yeah, this yeah. is it. I'm so, out. But um, I, I lived there for five years. You know, I, I frequent there all the time. You yeah. know, um, but after college, I um, I went back to California. You know what I mean, I went home for a little bit, just you know, regroup. Uh, my family had a medical supply company at the time. Oh, nice. Um, so I kind of worked with my mom and my dad in that space a little bit. But I also ended up buying a tobacco shop. Me and my nice. sister bought a tobacco shop. Well, in, in in so in California. Nice. Yeah, it was in um, Marino Valley, California. Okay. Marino Valley. Nice. So I was doing that for some time. Um, while at UNLV, I developed a uh, a love and a skill set for being a sports better. Okay. You know? sports better. So I was I became really good at that. Yeah. So I made a lot of money doing sports in, betting. In what what parlays? Uh, uh, basketball, basketball, yeah, football, yeah, yeah. hockey, yeah. Oh, whatever okay. you name it. Every man made a lot of money in that. That's space. good. Good for you. So I was working, had a smoke shop, working with my parents, and then sports betting on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Between those three things, I was able to just, you know, kind of get my life back on track a little bit as far as um, resource resources. Yeah. When you're young, you know, college, you know, is great. You got the degree, but right. it's like, what do I do now? Right. right. You right. know what I mean? And I always, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. But when I, when I went to college for the sports agency stuff, it just didn't go the way that I thought it would go. Right. Alan should have been better at this basketball just playing. Come on, Alan. <laughs> Alan didn't end up he didn't end up going pro the and that, way that we was playing. Your yeah. brother? That was my brother. Okay. My whole plan was to, brother. Yeah. My whole plan was to, you know, obviously represent him. He was very good. Um he just he didn't catch the breaks that he needed. Uh, yeah. So it yeah. kinda it kinda threw me off of that journey. Oh, good. Okay. okay. So I put that to the back burner. Yeah. But like like I said, ten years later, my partner, Chris Lucci, if you see this. Lucci. Um, Is it Lucci, Italian? Lucci? Uh, He's not Italian. Oh, He's that's a, a great name. Man. I love it. Yeah. 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 Sounds good name though. Sounds, sounds Italian. Yeah. Lucci, um, certified, bona fide, very successful sports agent. He gave me the opportunity to be partners with him. Nice. Wow. Nice. Years, years down the line through mutual friends that we had. Yeah. And how many years later did that occur? About From 10. After college. After yeah, college. Yeah, see, this goes back, and I, I'm digressing for a moment, but this this goes back to what Brandon was saying, like the whole is college necessary? This is the the one you know um, area that I think is is the question after college a lot of kids don't really know where to go what to do some of them have jobs yeah. you know right at when they get out which is great some of them do not some of them are still kind of looking even after college they had so, a term for these guys that was called twixters twixters yeah oh. a term for people who graduate college kind of have to go back home with your parents yes you're in yeah. your mid-20s don't yeah. really know what to do yeah, yeah. kind of depressed for some time yeah, yeah. because you know it's, that throws not, you off track yeah it throws you off yeah. track and things aren't really if you don't have the network and the connections, yeah. things aren't really what they say they're going to be just because you have the degree. Right. Yeah. It's not like, like everybody does the cheering and clapping. Yeah. And here you go. And here, go see that there guy for your job. He'll start yeah. you up one day. Yeah. You're like, where do I go? What do I do? Yeah. And right. what job is going to pay for all these bills? Right. Yeah. You know? So, right. so you got into that. So then, so, so how, what, by the way, just <clears> unpack that a little bit. So working in, in sports management, what does that involve? What's your typical? So are you, are you developing up and coming players? Are you working with guys that are already like in the big leagues? Are you negotiating contracts? Are you getting them to, are you doing like the off court stuff of like sponsorships and things? Like all of it. Ooh, it's all of it. Let's all go. Of it. It's a boutique okay. sports agency. Um, Chris was fortunate enough to, he had, he had worked with the biggest sports agency before, but he branched off on his own. 
Gotcha. As a boutique independent sports agency. So we wear all the hats. Wow. You know what I mean? So everything from player personnel, which is what I do primarily, just develop the players, negotiate contracts, obviously, uh, marketing deals, um, you know, helping them get acclimated into new cities if they're, you know, if they're being traded or if they're getting drafted. Okay. Um, helping them put together their workout schedule with the trainers that we have in our network. Nice. Um, everything, man, is it's, it's a lot. It's not an easy, not an easy task at all. Do you like working with athletes? Yeah, it's a yeah, passion. I figured, you know, yeah, yeah. It's a passion that's of mine. Cool. It's organic. For yeah, me. yeah, right. Yeah. yeah how you know I mean? how's business? Um, in the sports industry yeah. space, I mean, have you been watching the contracts lately? Yeah. Contracts. yeah. Now, Do you will, represent those guys? You well, I'm about to say, we don't have one of the big guys yet, yeah. but they're coming. They're coming, you know? yeah. I, yeah. I, we're actually working with a guy right now that's a huge guy in the NBA. We're not his agent, but we're doing some marketing stuff for him. I'm not going to say his name yet. Okay. How, but how, do you all connect, how do you connect to the up and coming guys? You so, he sends him a tweet, and that's it. So, <laughs> send him a tweet. Man, yeah, so, I love it. So, in that space, everything is. Your network. Your network. Yeah. And, and you can never, it can, it can never be big enough. Yeah. So from going to the grassroots, the games, from even if, even if it's something as little as, you know, your girlfriend has a brother who has a friend that's good. Yeah. Boom. You want to yeah. always get your face out there. You want to, just like how we do in real estate space. Yeah. You want to yeah. always share what you're doing. Yeah. You want to, hey, do you know a friend that has a friend? You know, when we're looking for investors, we're always sharing. Who, you don't know anybody in this space? Yeah. Right. Same thing with basketball. Do you, you know, who's good? Who's, you have a cousin? He's mm -hmm. good? Okay, well, let, let me get a meeting with him. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you kind of, you only eat what you kill. Yeah. Right. So. And that's, you know, that's, I, that's kind of how you guys operate. So same, just like us being realtors in real estate where we. We bring. We have to bring in money to, to get paid. Yeah, is that the same thing over there? Absolutely. Gotcha. Yeah, gotta and are you are you connecting with these guys like in high school or girls? So, guys. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh. So it all goes back to your your relationships. Right. Some networks are are as old as. See, in this space, you could you can never dispose of anybody. Right. Yeah. You right. don't know who's gonna be what. Right. You don't know if your friend from college has a son who might end up being the guy. Right. So, right. So like, I have so many friends who we never did anything in that space for years, but now. Their friend has a kid who's really good now. Wow. You know, so I'm now on, you're like, okay. Yeah, because, you know, time goes by. People have kids. They, yep. Their kids play sports. So now they have a kid who's 16, 17, and he's looking promising. Right. They might reach out to me and, uh, hey, you know, what's going on with this space? Yeah. And now it's really crazy because these kids are getting paid at a very, very young age. Right. And, and now they can, and, by the way, they, they can get paid yeah. uh, in college now, in right? College, that used to be, wasn't that the big, by the way, that was the big, uh, the Reggie Bush thing. Well, they that took his the Heisman trophy away. Yeah. Now he's got yeah. it back, right? He's back in the Heisman. Oh, oh, oh um, did they give it back to him? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh, they did. NIL, you know, NIL is open yeah. now. And my, yeah. my partner, Chris, he's actually one of the, one of the um, godfathers of, trying, of, of fighting for this. For the players, you know, it for makes many, sense. many years. Because the amount of money the colleges are making on these sports programs. Millions. So why, why couldn't these guys millions. get paid making money like the pros. Yes. NCAA was making billions. Oh, uh, billions. Yeah. billions. So their whole yeah. thing was they didn't want any of their students, athletes, you know, whatever, you know, any of the yeah, colleges to make just, any money. But yeah. it, why? You're making all the money off of them. And they because can't make I think they say it taints, it taints the sport. But I, well, I think it, that's BS. Well, because the sports was deemed amateur. But so remove that. Right, yeah. because yeah. at the end of the day, these kids are working. Of course, you know what I mean. They're working hard, yeah. and um, they deserve to have a one hundred percent. Look at the sure. money they're bringing in yeah. from some of these successful off of their name. What do you, what do you think names. about the chick that just went to the WNBA? Caitlin Clark, Clark is that her name? Yeah. Caitlin Clark. I mean, yeah. I, I've heard all the you know she's in all, in all these articles and all these things. And was she a big draft pick? I guess the top she's draft number one pick. pick. Yeah, she's the, okay, she was the pick. Okay, she's good. Probably the best college female basketball she, Okay, player, one of them for sure. Wow, I heard there was some controversy. Recently, yeah, it's her. a lot with her because she's she's changing the face of the game. She's changing the face. So of the game. some people yeah. are, are feathers are a little ruffled because yeah. of that. Yeah, it, it comes with growth. It you does. Know what I mean, when yeah. certain industries is growing and a, a particular person or persons, her and yeah. obviously injuries, if they're pushing the game forward, you'll you'll get some pushback and some old veterans right. that might right you know feel away. But shout out to WNBA women doing their thing. Love my, that. Uh, one of my one of my uh, one of my friends represents uh, Flaw J Johnson. Um, she's placed for LSU. Okay. Um, I, we actually, actually, yeah. I was gonna say, I think Flaje's supposed to invest with us. By the way, we'll get to on, that later. Come on, let's go. <laughs> hey. So Flaje's office. She's also another good, talented player that'll, that'll be in the WNBA in, in the next coming years. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. So all these are just relationships. Like I went relationships. To, um, yeah. I went to the the um, McDonald's All American game in um, Chicago two years ago. Yeah. That's where we met Flaje and her family at. But just doing things like that, going to go recruit guys, get familiar with guys, and just get in the mix. So you would say, so that's like Greg and I always say, like our day job, if you will, 
is working as real estate brokers. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done it for a while. We have a lot of clients. That's how we keep food on the table, basically. Now, our other businesses are the, are the ones we're probably more passionate about, but are the bu building the long-term wealth, So, which is real estate. So your, your day job is the sports management, right? That's, My that's, day job is everything that I name. Okay. From the sports management to the music to the real estate. Yeah, 100% wear, that's I'm wearing, boom. I'm wearing those hats every day. Those, those are hats all the time. Day. Yeah, I like yeah. that. So you always yeah. got those balls in the I'm all I'm juggling like a motherfucker. I love that. I love it. You can say it by the way, like a motherfucker. I'm Let's go. I'm like a motherfucker right now. Wait for somebody uh, like to I wake up at 6 a.m. Yeah. 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 yeah, I hit the gym and then I might wear the uh, sports agency hat, sports agency hat for like two hours. Right. Then I gotta uh, go to the Pop music. Over. Do you have an office? Uh, you must, but you, you have an office at your house. Yes. And do you have another office to join? You go to or? Nah, no. Um. I pretty much now since after since post COVID. Yeah. I've been at the house for everything. Yeah. Pre COVID, pretty I had much. an office off, off Canoga. Okay. Um. Right in Willing Hills. But I never went. Right. You know what I mean? Especially right. during COVID. So, you know, I'd use the I'd use the leverage of keeping an office in my house and right yeah. there. Well listen, houses. when you got a five thousand plus square foot house, True. I mean again, you can <laughs> yeah. have an office, a gym, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a second yeah. gym, a few. That's the, that's yeah, the whole point. Know. I'm not yeah. trying to leave. Once, yeah. once the pib is done, 100%. I want to do everything at my house. I'm over Enjoy here house. in a little yeah. fifteen hundred square foot house, yeah. house with the kids and the dog <laughs> yeah, and, the, and the cat and the whatever's going yeah, down. Right. I'm like, oh, I'm out. Manage, you get I don't I don't yeah, I'm out, you know. I gotta go to that office. So but Juwan, okay, so let's talk about let's talk about some real estate. Um, so I'm really interested to know how did you first get into real estate? What was your first deal you did? How did it go? Let's talk about that. So yeah, my real estate journey is uh, quite interesting. Um, people always ask me. Um, I didn't like I didn't go to real estate school or nothing mm -hmm. like that. I'm not an agent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, just growing up in my household, I used to always hear my mom and my dad just talk like escrow and. Yeah. Refinance. Right. And just, yeah. I'm always here. Always heard the terms. Those terms. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I knew at an early age I wanted to be involved in real estate. Okay. I always, always wanted to be a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. I never wanted to be pigeonholed into just, just one, one thing. Place, yeah. I wanted to be a businessman, and I knew no matter what I did in life, I wanted to all to at some point always do real estate with whatever I was doing. Nice. So when I was in college, I read books. You know what I mean? I read all the real estate, the gurus and stuff yeah. like that. You know, back then. Dad, poor dad. All that. Art know. of the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At that time, there was no social media, so you just got to go pick up the book and read it. I was reading books, but I didn't really understand yeah. the concept of being an investor. Um, I thought about getting my license at some point. Never really followed through with it. But when I graduated college, um, I knew at some point I wanted to be an investor. Because to me, that's something everybody should be. You don't yep. have to necessarily. Be, you don't have to be like a full time job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just that's an investment. Yeah. And were you attracted initially to the idea of flipping a house, or were you attracted to the so, idea of owning something you could hold on to for a while and having someone send yeah. you that, that the cash yeah. flow every month? I yeah. think I was more attracted to holding and building wealth. Holding yeah. and building. Yeah. Smart. But right. with that, you can always incorporate flipping. Yeah. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but living in L.A was very discouraging. Woo. Yeah. So I'm like, what? It's a hard like, place to start. Hard yeah. place to start. If like, you're, if you're gonna go I out see start... my parents, you know, yeah. my mom and my dad, they had like a bunch of apartment complexes, well, small ones, like triplexes, yeah. you know what I mean? And I, and doing like the, what was it, 08? 08, um, yeah. Uh, crash. crash. Right, okay. yeah. They lost everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm like, damn, I don't want to be that person, so yeah. how do I still get involved in real estate, Yeah. but not be that? They didn't really know much about like, too much of the cash flow process. You know, they're just doing the best they can. They yeah. knew buy properties. They, they were, were on the right like, track. On the property, right track. Yeah. yeah. Equity, you know, they were more the equity type, you know, which sure. is great. Sure. But I don't think they really crunched the numbers like that. And uh, they definitely probably didn't really look in the right places. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, I, I went through that process and I, and I noticed I'm like, okay, I want to get involved in this space, but how the f do I do that in LA? So for me, my journey started out of state. Uh, okay. I went from out of state, uh -huh. you know, back back into, you know, with you guys and other markets. So I started out of state in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. What was, by, what was by, the first deal? My first deal was a $30,000 single family Ooh. home. Yeah. You did yourself. And I bought that cash. Yourself. Okay. By myself. Yeah. At the time, you know, a novice in the game, I told you I made a lot of money in sports betting, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. A month. In sports betting, nice. So I I I I, uh, I piled up my bankroll, nice. And I was getting ready to invest in California. Yeah. And one of my good friends, LJ, shout out to LJ. He uh he's from Cleveland. Ohio. He's like, man, you should check you should check my state out. <laughs> yeah. At that time, I had no clue about out of state investing. Right. 
All you really, all you pretty much know is where you're from, right. where you live at. Right. Yeah. So I went out there, visited him, and I was blown away. I was just like, you know, us Californians, we're looking at the prices, the price right. difference. Yeah. Like, difference. Yeah. I'm like, like thirty thousand. Yeah. That's not I'm even like, down payment on the house bro, in California. Yeah. <laughs> that's a few months of rent. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, I'm like, what is this? Yeah. So like, my, I got my eyes just. Lit up. By the way, what year was this when you first went to Cleveland? This is like 2016, okay. 16, 17-ish, yeah. right before, like a few years before COVID. So you go out to Cleveland, check it out. You're check blown away. Out. I'm blown away. By the way, you like the city of Cleveland? Like, like, like. I mean, you know. I mean, but it's, like, it's supposed to be like a middle class. Yeah, uh, it's a like blue collar, blue collar. Middle class, you and know it's a good I mean? size. No, Cleveland's, it's good, I mean, it's a good size. Like a million people there, 500,000 yeah. people. I don't know, but it's got to be a It's a good size. size. But you had a friend out there. I had a friend there. Okay. Yeah. Which helps. I mean? so you weren't just totally yeah. going blind and knowing the boots yeah. on the ground always. Right? Exactly. I've always lo- I learned that from yeah. day one. Boots on the ground. So I had a friend there, and I um I bought that property, and like three four years later, that property ended up like doubling and a half. Nice. Right when COVID hit, yeah, all the properties that I bought, yeah, pre COVID, yeah, went to the roof. Went to the roof. Yeah, that's what and happened. If within within from like 2016 to like 2019 2020, I was just like hooked on. Gotcha. On real estate, yeah. and I was just increasing my knowledge. And then, so you uh, bought these, held on to them, just rented them. Yeah, right. I bought Fixed them up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I bought them. Some had um, hidden value right. in them. You know what I mean? You know, some I did basement work. I, I, I added, you know, another room up top. Right. Some had some cosmetic work I needed to do. A lot of them I bought just straight up. How did you manage the renovations? Is that going back to the boots on the ground? Your, your friend that was the there, so he would yeah. help you manage the contractors. And well, no, he would. He connected me with some people out there. I see. I did my due diligence. I actually started going out there often, and okay. I built my own relationships out there. So right. that's why I was able to teach the classes online, too. I was teaching courses online on how to invest out of state because I already had all the connections. So nice. would you say if somebody's going to new market, I mean, I guess to ask the obvious question, how important is it to have the boots on the ground? And, how, and, and additionally, how important is it to actually physically get there yourself sometimes? Because back to being in a digital world, everybody kind of assumes that they can just be on the computer for everything. But yeah. sometimes there's there's no replacement of being somewhere in person, particularly yeah. with real estate investing. Yeah, you know? yeah. so um, what I say to that, and what I tell all my students that, that I have to some of my courses, you can't do it without boots on the ground. Yeah. That's number one. Right. Um, you, have to, you have to leverage the internet and leverage you know, technology. However, you all you also need to you gotta get sure. your ass there. You gotta okay. get your ass there. You gotta yeah. kick some tires. At some point, you walk yes. the neighborhood. Yeah, because you yeah. can only local, see so much online. You can only see so much cuisine. Yeah. Like yeah. meet the people. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that we have talked about, you know, early in our investment career, is um, boots on the ground, like you said, Juwan. And when what that means to us and to maybe to a lot of people is. You know, you can see it online, you can see it, but you can't see the neighborhood because because what ends up happening is you have to think about the end game. So if I roll up on that property and I love it, the neighborhood's great and there's curb appeal or there's potential curb appeal, but I'm seeing it as somebody down the road when we're going to sell it yep. would see it. Like Grant Cardone says, think about the exit. That, yeah, that's exactly, exactly. right. What's you think exit? about the, that's yeah. it. Think about the exit. So that was smart, Juwan. Yeah, I mean, you got to like, you could online not gonna give you that feeling. No. Right. Online no. you could read. Right. You could get an idea. Right. You could see, but you can't feel. You buy it oh, yeah. sight unseen. You yeah. are open yeah. for all kinds so, of. So now you know. I'm not gonna lie. I don't have to go out there all the time. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. Once you get out there and you have, you know how to navigate through that particular market and you're familiar with it from going there. Right. Then you know you don't have to go there every time. You know, even 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 us, right? We have a a, 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 a building in Auburn. We're yep. not there every day. No, right? But not. Right. we've been there enough. We've been there enough. The town wouldn't know. allow Clooney uh, to be there every day. <laughs> <laughs> I sneak in at night. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I would say, um, I would say it's a combination of both. You know, what I mean, using yeah. technology. Yeah. No, you don't have to make life too hard for yourself That's no more. True. With technology now, we could touch different markets mm-hmm. from our phone, from you know, from 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 the tip of our oh, phone, using your boots on the ground, but also entering that market as well, getting the feel of what's going on and being familiar with that market face to face. Absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. Go ahead, man. So I was gonna say, uh, so Juwan, so talk us about talk to us about your portfolio. So how many properties did you buy uh, out there in Cleveland and have you um, from that side of the business, you know, traded up to some bigger properties or you, or you still got a bunch of duplexes and houses and five pl- I don't know actually what you bought, but yeah, take yeah. us through that. So I have eleven doors. Okay. Um I have a um eleven I actually have a. 16 doors, but I'm letting five go now. Ah, okay. Yeah, so I, you're selling a fiveplex. Selling a fiveplex. All yeah. right. Um, I have 11 doors. It's composed of um, 
a small apartment complex, um, two um, duplexes, okay, and then a couple of single families. Nice, man. Yeah. Eleven doors. That's impressive, especially you know in a short period of time. A short period, relatively you know? short yeah. period of time. And yeah. you're doing it by yourself. And I would be a lot further, but I, you know, I bought from your wife. Yep. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that I'm, that I'm still trying to that, get that, that place together. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's an interesting story. How how we yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we, why don't we let's talk yeah. about that, Greg? Why yeah. How did we all meet? This is really interesting. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so these are my partners, guys. You know what I mean? Um, it's a pleasure working with these guys. Very very brilliant guys. Um, so. As I was navigating through the real estate space as a getting multi, small multifamilies and single families, I knew I wanted to get into multifamily. Right. You know what I mean? I, you know, the, the deeper you get into the game, you'll probably end up transitioning slowly from single family to real multifamily. Uh, by, by the way, why is that important? Why, why you know, if somebody says, hey, I, I just feel like just buying a bunch of little houses or duplexes makes sense to me. And by the way, it may make sense to them. But but why does it make more sense to trade up into bigger properties versus having a lot of smaller ones? In your so opinion? many reasons. So many reasons. Um, and like I said, I don't knock. Uh, being into real estate, number one, is great. I don't okay. knock anybody's, you know, particular niche. But from my lens is, it's better and it's important to go into bigger properties or trade into bigger properties because number one, the, the ability to just scale. When it's time to renovate buildings or do um, some maintenance work, if you have 10 or 15 single family homes across All the city, these different areas. It could get a little difficult, yeah. you know what I mean, to manage that and opposed to having 10 units, you'll learn that's gonna be extremely advantageous and easy, easier to manage, that's yeah. one. Two, um, you know, if you have a tenant who's not paying for whatever reason, maybe they have some temporary financial um, hardships, you still have 10 more units. Right. That's that are, exactly that right. One person right. stops paying you on an yeah. 11 flex. Yeah. yeah. You're you still, still over 90%. Have, still okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you still have resources coming in. You still have cash flow yeah. coming in. You're not screwing. Single family, that person don't pay, you're screwed. Hey, Kaden, mm -hmm. we're going to leave the door open because then it, it seems like it goes away. Yeah. Or do you not? Or you can't. Uh, leave, are you not supposed to leave the door open? Um, well, just for the lighting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it, well, Kaden. Stopped. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like right above us. All right, guys. I think. Wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's like I said. We're perfectly first. fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one's burning. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So. so Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely has some notices on the water lines outside. Yeah, yeah. 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 What are we paying you to, to rent this today? Uh, I think the, <laughs> right. the rate just went down. By yeah, the way, yeah, so. that and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll talk about it after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so going back to scale. So, yeah. you know, I think when people. You know, there's kind of two different groups of people, and I think in the real estate business, there's the people that get into it and they are kind of okay staying small, and they, it feels more comfortable to them mm -hmm. to buy smaller properties, and they're not trying to be, you know, this huge conglomerate or huge real estate investor. And you have other people that really want to build a big portfolio, and even in that latter camp, some of those people decide to go down that path of doing it with via smaller properties, yeah. and it's always interesting to me because again, if you're the type of person where you're like, I just want to have a couple rentals and, and live a comfortable life. No problem, right? But if you're really trying to build something big, you're, what you're saying makes a thousand percent, you know, sense. It's like you can't, you can't possibly have to deal with. I mean, first of all, every time we do an escrow, I mean, damn, it's like that the brain true. damage. You guys know the brain Ooh, damage of yeah. doing an escrow. You got to find it, get under contract, do inspections, all these things. Do you want to do 200 escrows or do you want to do 20 escrows on bigger buildings, right? Or whatever yeah. the number would be, right? Um, but you're right though. There's, there's, um, two different camps because we, we talked to a lot of people recently who have 25 single family homes Yeah, yeah. and you know, there's Ooh. pros and cons, I guess there's pros and cons to everything, sure. but there's, but the pro would be, you know, I can liquidate my single family house yes. probably pretty quicker. And you don't have I to can. sell off one big building. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So it, there's <clears throat> pros and cons to both sides, but I think you're right. Brandon is like scalability. The guys that are really trying to get uh, big, 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 uh, maybe faster is acquiring more doors under one roof mm -hmm. over and over Larger again. unit counts. Yeah. Right. Because it just takes longer. These guys that I'm talking about, Juwan, they owe 25 units, uh, single families. It's, it, it, it was over years. Yeah, it's over years. years. Yeah. And Magic Johnson uh, yeah. had this, um, he said something very um, profound. He was like, the same amount of time it takes to do 
a small deal. Yep. It's the same amount of time it might take to do it. That. that is true. Seriously. That is true. And That's it's like, exactly So right. do you yeah. want to do 10 small deals right. or one big ass deal right. and then just keep on going right. from there? You know what I mean? So yeah. well, I think we've kind of shifted our mindset too with, the, with, with even our existing portfolio of going, okay, you know, it used to be even exciting to buy an apartment building and go, hey, I think we can make a million bucks on this. And that was kind of our, maybe our unspoken, like how we were underwriting things. Like, can we make a million bucks on this? You yeah. know, five years or six years or seven years. Okay, cool. That's a million there. Okay, cool. That's a good investment. But now, you sure. know, right now we're looking at this going, dude, if Raise we can't make three, four million bucks on this deal <laughs> yeah. or even more, right? Yes. And that number is going to even increase yeah, over time. Yeah. Um, we're not going to do it because we understand now how much time really goes into you know, managing these things, finding them, dealing with the finances. If you're going to put the time in, go big. You might go as well big. go big. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy because I used to be scared to go big. Well, yeah. I think people are. I think going back to those two camps, I think I people I used yeah. to be scared. Right. Jawan, you and I were talking about this earlier about like my hat's off to you because you, you're kind of doing this on your own. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've got partners, Brandon, the, uh, Kevin, Chuck, and you know guys in our real estate business. I was that. I was scared to get going on my own. You know, I'm a little older in, in life right now. And I, oh. you know, I'm feeling, Are you? you know, <laughs> we won't mention <laughs> it. He jokes there. We but, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but my point is, is I, I wish I would have had the, <laughs> I don't know, the gumption to, to, to get it go to go back get, in time when you started yeah. buying real estate at yeah. a much younger age. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Even if it was single family, because Juwan has made you know one move after the other after yes. the other, and he's Wrong. progressively yeah. getting the confidence that he needs yes. to do these deals by himself. Yes. He can bring in. He, he's partnering up with us some on multifamilies. So yeah, I my hats off to you because you you've started the the journey and and uh, a lot sooner than I did. So Thank you. yeah. And it's crazy because I wish I would have started a lot sooner. Yeah, than I, I think did. we all yeah. do. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that You're funny? never gonna regret. Starting. You're not. You're going to no. regret not starting yeah. sooner. sooner. Yeah. 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 You're right. Yeah. Sure. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, but again, going back to that. So then why, why, let's talk, let's unpack some myths, I guess, in, in, as far as going to bigger deals. So first of all, someone says, well, I can't go into a bigger deal because um, it's harder to get the loan for that. It's going to be harder for me to go get a $3 million mortgage. A bank's not going to give me a $3 million loan. Why, what am I to talk with them? I don't even well, look at that deal. Well, so is that, is that a myth? That's a myth. You know what I would say to that? And I used to think about those. I used to be the guy who, yeah. who was like, oh, no, that's for the big boys only. And it might be for big boys, but you're a big boy, too. Right. Because when you learn how the system works, it's actually easier to get lending and funding for bigger deals because right. you're able to raise the capital yeah. if you structure the deal correctly, like how we do via syndication. And, yeah, and I think lending, they focus on the deal. The deal yeah, itself, the deal. rather so it's than less about the borrower, yeah. it's more about rather the deal. than the borrower. Uh, exactly. Yeah, with, with residential, it's more about the borrower. Yeah, yeah. with bigger deals, it's more about the deal. The deal. They yeah. want to be partners with you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah it's, it's it's crazy, man. It's actually the exact opposite. Exactly. Of what opposite. people think. Is it is it harder to manage a bigger deal? What do you guys think? Or is it easier to manage a bigger deal? Well, what you think? well, what I what I feel like you know my experience is that we're finding it it's easier um but you've got to manage the manager so we have property right. managers on every you know property that we own so there's boots on the ground every day with these um folks but you've got to manage them too yeah always. so it's an easier process to do and would you say if you go into bigger deals the fees can be bigger to a PM company, so you can afford to hire better project man property managers. Right, and in doing that, maybe that does become yeah. easier. Yeah, I, I think Brand the scalability. Right, so you have more doors under under your you know management. The cash flow is bigger. You can afford to to, to start hiring people in your business. Well, because you think know, about it like this: if you're paying a property manager five hundred bucks a month to manage your 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 triplex or something, you know. How motivated are they really? I mean, right. granted, right. of course, if they have lots of clients and maybe they're getting 500 from, you know, but right. let's just say they're getting 500 bucks and, and, and we have a situation with one of our smaller properties, yep. you know, the guys don't charge us a lot of money because it's just an incremental, you know, equation on the rents and, you know, you can tell it's just what it is, but they can't, they can't spend as much time on that property and give you real quality service because they're only getting so much. But if you have a company or a property manager, you're paying. Five thousand or ten thousand or some right. big property where they're getting thirty thousand a month from you. It gets you think they're going to care about that? Yeah. Are it they going to care about that oh, managing yeah. that thing they get, the right way? They'll get renewal. They'll, they'll get little commissions along the way too, and those numbers pick up too with yeah. a lot with more units under under them. Yeah. So, yeah. do you think when someone's hiring a property manager that they should not uh, what do I want to say trip over the dollars to get the pennies? In other words, 
I think people have a tendency sometimes to over negotiate fees with people they work with. Yeah. Um, we're, I mean, we're all good negotiators, great negotiators. We're all deal makers. Thank but you. Thank you, you, Brandon. You know, Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I guess what I'm saying, is it better to go for someone that's quality? In other words, let the, let the property manager make their 6% or do you want to grind them down to, to, to five and a half or five and a quarter or four and seven eighths and, and have them kind of resent you right out of the gate. And by the way, yeah. it's making like a $30 a month difference. I mean, what do you guys think about quality well, when you, it's that fine line, business person, right? Negotiating, but also not over negotiating and getting quality from people, right? Yeah, I always, I always believe in um, quality um, over everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you want the job done right. Right. And you want people who are doing the job to feel good about doing the job. Right. And put the energy into doing what you're paying them to do. If, if you really grind somebody down too hard, at the end of the day, they might accept it and be like, man, I'm going to But yeah. it. There's some resentment. Yeah. We'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. I'll take bucks, it, but screw you. About, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're, so yeah. definitely negotiate, but listen to the person you're negotiating yeah. with. And, you know, don't beat them up too bad. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. I, I, I mean, what what is it? Uh, don't fight on price. What value do you get Bingo. for that? What value, value. If, yeah. if they're managing the property nicely and you've already done your numbers, your due diligence, um, and it and it and it pencils out perfectly mm -hmm. whatever they're charging, and then the value they're creating, you have peace of mind, right. and and the property just keeps moving in yeah. the right direction. Yeah, Whereas you start forward. negotiating with their fees, they're gonna feel resent yeah. resentful, uh, and um, you know who knows, you know <laughs> maybe subconsciously they're not gonna pay much attention to exactly. your property. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. it. So, hey, I want to go back before this whole fire alarm thing happened. We were, we were starting to go into how we all met, which is yeah. really a funny oh, story. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my, my wife, she sells new homes for Toll Brothers. And she sells new homes in a very nice area, Porter Ranch. And these are beautiful homes, 5,000 square feet, two, three plus million dollar homes, $4 million homes, whatever they are. Um, and... And so, anyway, I'm going to bring this up to the point because I want you to, but, but Greg and I and our other two partners, Kevin and Chuck, we went to Denver for a Rod Khalif conference. Shout out to Rod and Shout all his warriors. We love those guys. Um, and we were there at, I think, like a VIP event after one of the day's seminars. And, and, and Juwan, take it away. We bumped into each other and what happened? Yeah, man. We bumped into each other. Man. So we were in line. What happened was <laughs> we were in line. I think we took a break. We went in line to go get like maybe a drink or some food or something like that. We ran into each other. We we're just having, you know, casual chit chat. Um, we went to this event, it's a real estate conference, I guess, right? Yep. Um, you know, just trying to further your knowledge in the, in the space. And me, I was getting into multifamily. I wanted to get into multifamily. I had the 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 uh, the goal to get here and just learn more about multifamily. Yeah. And you came by yourself. I came by myself. Like, yeah. Yeah. Juwan, like that's amazing. <laughs> like again, like here Greg I am. Go anywhere here, by himself. <laughs> but Juwan, like, here I am with these guys. You know, I feel yeah. safe and stuff. But yeah. why couldn't I just? You know, why couldn't any of us? You know, again, yeah. hats off to you. You just did it. Yeah, the way you, you know? just, you know, our genetic makeup. You know, however, we, however we're made up is we, we move on, on, on according to that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just a mover. When I make my mind up on something, I'm going to move you on. You go. It. So I went out there, and then uh, you know. Um, we ended up bumping into each other in line and we just, me and Brandon started chopping it up. All these guys were great. We started chopping it up and I'm like, well, where are you from? He's like, da, da, da. I'm from here. I'm like, he's like, where are you from? I'm like, well, I just bought a house in Puerto Ranch. He's like, oh, my wife. Light bulb goes off in my head. Puerto <laughs> Ranch. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, oh. my wife sells homes there. And, da, da, da. and I'm wait, like, is your wife? wife. Small yeah, like, Morgan. He's like, Morgan? She sold me the damn Shout house. Morgan. Yeah. She's the goat. She <laughs> sold me my house. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. it's a funny story. His wife was like my sales rep. Been I've been knowing her for years before I even bought my house. I was going up there every single month just wishful thinking and just... You know, just speaking things into existence. She's probably she was probably tired of me. I was coming up there when I was when I was broke. I was coming up to come talk to Morgan about uh, that one day. Visualize that's great. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always visualize before I do anything. Visualize, touch it, feel it. Just you know, they say fake it till you make it, right? So, so yeah. you've known my wife for like a year or two at this point. Yes, maybe longer. Yeah, you bought a I house through her. Yeah, then we're in Denver together and 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 happen to bump into each other at line at that event yeah start talking yeah and realize we're both real estate people yes. and you know my wife and it was yeah. like wow it could there be a and you know what's yeah. funny when i bought when i you know i i, I brought my friends to, to yeah. morgan like i talked to morgan at least once a month <laughs> when i before i bought my house yeah. and she mentioned that i think she mentioned one time oh my husband uh, da, da, da. this is before i even met you yeah 
I'm mean, years before I ever met you. So when we met, I'm like, so wow. Funny. That's crazy. So I was, I believe, we had to go all the way to Denver that, to meet Isn't that something cool though? Right. From LA. Yeah. So I believe in the path of the least resistance. I believe when things like that happen so organically, they're obviously meant to be. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that's not really like a by chance thing. Like yeah. the sound, right. there's, 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 cool there's obviously some yeah. synergy there. You know what yeah, I mean? For some, sure. Some things are supposed to happen. One, yeah. look where it led us. I mean, so now we've become friends. Obviously, yeah. we're shooting podcasts together. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, we ended up buying our first deal together. And yeah. it was only what? Maybe it was maybe six months after the conference, eight yeah. months after the conference. I don't know what it was. Something yeah, like that. maybe six months out, uh, from, from the time we met. You know, I wanted to get into this space and, you know, we became really cool, and um, you know, I, I told the bros what I wanted to do, and they gave the me the opportunity to join them on the deal, and here we are. Well, and we it's appreciate great. you joining the deal. You've yeah, done a great well. job. You're an awesome partner, and and I know we're all excited to um, hopefully replace Clooney with you <laughs> in our in our business. So <laughs> I, I we can figure out. Clooney's too handsome. I'll, I'll, re answer, I'll retire. We need him. <laughs> Listen, we need the face. I will retire. By the way, I will retire. You know, this guy never used to say anything about retirement, right? <laughs> and now lately, I hear him. I don't know if he's trying to just like he's trying to maybe I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to do. Yeah, you know, he's I trying to focus either. me on that he's going to leave at some point. Cash out on that billion dollar alcohol. Oh, right, yeah, right. You know Clooney, I mean? exactly. Listen, no, listen, but he keeps I'm, saying lately, I'm like, open for opportunity. You know? Okay, I'm going to ask the question right now. <laughs> yeah. When are you going to retire? No. Good. No. Okay, we'll leave it at that. No. I, my next I question was when. I change my not. venue. Yeah. Like, I don't have to go into the office. Like, Juwan, you say, I'll be in my office and yeah. just do stuff from home, get on the phone. And I like to go meet people. I love yeah. meeting people. Juwan, I know you're a people you person too. Yes. <laughs> Five out of ten. <laughs> but but, uh, time doesn't exist. It doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. yeah. Juwan, you I might fall back on, like, hustling hard. Yeah. But if opportunity arises... Yeah. I'm always going to be working. Yeah, I feel like that's the heartbeat yeah. of, 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 you know, of keeping you alive. Exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. dignity you know comes from work. Santa what Barbara, else you walk do? the beach every yeah. morning with your wife and pick up pebbles or something? Yeah. Retirement <laughs> to me is financial freedom. 100%. That is true. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it allows you're you. are financially free or you're retired. It allows you, you the opportunity yeah. to do things, you know. When you when, want to do them. And when opportunities come up, you, exactly. can, you can take advantage of that. Yeah. yeah. You know, spending time with your friends and your yeah. family. You have all that opportunity when you have financial freedom. That's retirement. Yeah. You want to get a Winnebago and just travel the U.S. <laughs> and rollerblade everywhere. And, you know, hey. Yeah. Uh, I think Brandon really wants to rollerblade. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brandon. Hey, Greg. I'm going to be at the south of, uh, south of France yeah. for like you four weeks. Come? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all want to come? Yeah. Yeah. That's retirement. And then when I get back yes. home, I'll do, yeah. do some work. 100%. You know I, mean? I know yeah. we feel the same way. I love yeah. that. I yeah. love that, man. You know, Brandon wants to buy a jet in like uh, four was, or five years. You yeah, read my <laughs> mind. You, I swear you read my mind. I was literally, for some reason, thinking about a jet right now. I was literally about to bring up. Yeah. How important do you think it is to get a jet? I think it's important. If you're a business person, whether you own companies, real estate, and, and you know, is it? I a, think, I think. Having a jet is important when you're able to afford it because at the end of the day, it symbolizes like time yeah. is an important. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, an, it's probably the most important component in building wealth. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've grown to the point where you can buy a jet, you need a jet, you know, you can, you know, put yourself out there faster. Well, it comes a point if you're really doing like heavy business, right. a jet is mandatory. Yeah. Right, because what are you going to do? You're going to like jump hey. on, you know, Southwest and, and yeah. try to get a seat for like four right. days from now. To We're going to come today. We'll be there in a few hours. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Cool. Yeah, and I agree. And by the way, jets are not that expensive. They're not I mean, that I used expensive. To think they bro. were like every jet had to be fifty million dollars. No, but three, four, five million dollars for three, four, five million dollars. You can get a nice yeah. jet. You can get something for like a million bucks if you want a you know a prop plane or something. But how I don't about, know about this? That. But, but you know, <laughs> I'd rather be in something that has the turbine engines. But you know, yeah. what the point is, is like yeah, a few million bucks. How about this? We just bought a jet. We bought an apartment complex. We did. Yeah. The same price as a jet will cost. Yeah. By the yeah. way, for a second, I'm ready for you. Got a jet? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we got to cut this short. Let's, <laughs> Let's jump on it right there. Jet. And then yeah. another thing yeah. that me and my friend John, one of my business partners, John, talked about, when we're not chartering it, we can always rent it out. Yeah. You can always rent it out. Yeah. No, it does yeah. put in perspective. Our last, our building we bought together was three point two million dollars. You can get we a jet for that price. For that. Yeah. So you yeah. know, the reality is, it's it's accessible. We'll be there in a few years. I believe that. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think? When, when you're talking about a real estate deal, is it more important to have cash flow or the potential for um, large appreciation? Well, I always tell my students and people that I talk to, what's your goal? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think, it, I think it's based on the individual's goal. Mm -hmm. um, some people have heavy cash flow in their life already. Maybe they're just buying because the real estate has so many components to it. It's number one to store value. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you just want to just store your resources there, excuse me, you're, you could do that without yeah. making any cash flow. If you want to build equity, 
You could do that right. without, you know what I mean, having any cash flow. But if you're a cash flow person, you know, you can focus on that. So yeah. it just depends. I personally like to have a good combination of both. both. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I like to have cash flow because cash flow symbolizes that the deal's good. It pays for itself. Right. That's good. No money yeah, well out of my said, pocket. Juwan. Yeah. You know? Different many components. Is there? Yeah. Well, it's like our deal that we bought together, right? I mean, so it's cash flowing and it's cash flowing nicely and we're paying our investors right, right now around five percent. You know, obviously as that deal matures, we'll be able to spin off six percent, seven percent, eight percent, hopefully, right? Um yeah, there's places maybe in Indiana or something we could have bought that from day one, maybe we give them 10% 60, cash yeah, flow. Or 15, yeah, yeah, exactly, 15. Yeah. But that deal, those deals may not appreciate the way. Exactly. Going back to the hybrid idea, if we can get somebody, we believe if we can get somebody 5, 6, 7, 8% of their money with tax benefits and being in a real tangible asset, and, and you can do that over a 5, 6, 7 year period, and then boom, 2, 3x their capital yeah. on a nice appreciation play, refinance yeah. it, sell it, whatever the case is. I mean, that's a beautiful I, yeah, thing, right? I think I we, we we found, and and I know, Joanne, you you appreciate this. I think we found a really good niche in California. And when I talk about niches, like location, like you were speaking earlier about buying real estate in Los Angeles and Orange County, so it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. But in order to get the hybrid, the 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 cash flow and the appreciation, mm -hmm. and you know, this is you know one of these opportunities. You know, when when I met Brandon. And we started talking about real estate. He started talking about the Central Valley, Bakersfield. I it never Great, thought, thought it. I was crazy. I when thought I said it was that. Great. Great. Yeah. But but Juwan from well, the Central Valley, from Bakersfield all the way up, the way things are going right now economically in this state, it makes perfect sense. The the continued growth and migration to yes. to well, less expensive areas. I tell people all the time, the Central Valley is like going out of state. It's it like is. it's like California's Cleveland, it it right? Like, like, that's it exactly front. what it is. I'm it impressed is. with that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Man, yeah, it's like going out of state, yeah. but you're not going out of state. Yeah, yeah, and that's perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know, LA was just just the heavy hitters. It's, like it's, you have to be a yeah. heavy hitter, and you have to be willing to bypass the cash flow right. in, a lot of, in a lot of deals, right? For the future, for the future equity, equity. yeah. But you right. have to the be appreciation. Heavy. You're 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 right. definitely so. It's almost like once yeah. you make your money, you can you yes. can play here, but and, it's hard yes. to start making your money here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Once you're a heavy hitter, right. you can play here all day. Right. I always teach you know, real estate is cyclical. There's different markets. Yeah. LA is a great market for equity building, but you got to come in heavy cash. Heavy. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? So I love the, the idea of the Central Valley. The Central Valley. Do, do you think, yeah. Juwan, that it's a good time for people to be buying investment properties? I mean, interest rates are at an all-time high. Uh, insurance costs are at an all-time high. Carriers are continuing to pull out of various states, including California. Um, obviously, we're in an interesting election year. Lots going on. Um, do you think, uh, number one, are, do you think it's a good time to buy investment real estate? And are you actively looking for new opportunities? So I think it's probably the best time to buy investment real estate because, you know, they say we're about to enter a recession. I don't know how true that is or not, but I do know from history, from just my research with history, the most millionaires are made during these type of economic hardship uh, 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 moments right here. Right. I know one thing for sure, real estate doesn't have a history of going down. Right. right. It has a history of going up. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I like to use the motto of, you know, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Um, at some point, I believe rates will drop. And when rates drop, right. if you're a savvy investor, you can always refinance out your current rate. Yeah. 100%. So um, if you have the resources, if you have the knowledge, I think it's an incredible time to buy real estate. There is a huge transfer of wealth going on right now for those of us who understand what's going on especially in the multifamily space. Yeah. Yeah. There's a huge transfer of wealth going on. In addition to that, even in the single family space, real estate will probably be one of the most hardest assets to acquire as time goes on. Of course. It only so gets more expensive. It gets more expensive. Yeah. The big boys always coming in. The yep. big hedge funds. Yeah. They're doing Black crazy Rock, things. Black yeah. Stone, so these guys come in. If yeah. you're able to buy real estate, buy it. Yeah. If you're not able, become able and buy it. Do you think someone should buy the, the roof over their head first, the conventional side of things, or should they buy an investment property first? I'll tell you from personal experience, you know, uh, when I first got into this game, I made it a, I made it a actual um, priority to buy investment properties before I bought my house from your wife. Because for me, my investment properties could pay for my house. Right. And it actually does. You know, my collective. You're getting, you're getting rents over getting here. Getting rents. You know now you mean? got a, a mortgage on this big, beautiful house. Yeah. But you're collecting rents over here. Exactly. That starts offsetting things. Exactly. So that's that. how I look at it. And, you know, I love my house. And, you know, you know, I, I, it was a good investment for me still because I have a high equity on it. 
But even hindsight is 2020 for me. If I were able to go back in time, I would have took the money that I spent on my house and bought more and I would have bought multifamily. And just rented for a little while. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would have been able to just scale, make the same equity that I made off my house, but still have that cash flow coming in. Well, and, from and the see, this is the Grant Cardone thing, right? And he, that's why it pisses a lot of people off. And, and people, you know, I think, take it the wrong way. And, and maybe it is the wrong way for some people. But, you know, when he says a house is not an investment. You know, house can definitely be an investment. It can of be course. an investment, yes. Um, and and it's certainly a life investment, yes. even if it's not always a financial investment. Yeah. But you know, I think that there's this. It's just like anything else. It goes back to our conversation earlier about everyone should go to college and get a degree, right? Well, yeah. from the, since the beginning of time, people have been telling us, you know, well, buy it, buy your house. You know, put money in a four hundred one k. You know, you can yeah. retire yeah. when you're sixty five or whatever. Um, and it, and so it, it does blow away people's minds. I mean, you know, my wife and I, we rent where we live, but we, yeah. you know, with, with you guys and with, you want, you know, with all you guys, you know, we own eleven, twelve million dollars of the property yeah. and, and and growing. Um, yeah, so we're real estate I, I, owners, but we rent where we live because I feel the same way. If I'm going to take two or three hundred grand or five hundred grand, you know, in LA, you know, if I go buy a house where in my neighborhood I live, it's going to be a three, four, five million dollar house. And so, you know, am I going to take you know six hundred thousand dollars or eight hundred thousand dollars and plop it into the house? have a big mortgage, you know, it doesn't make sense for me. I'm not saying, I, I mean, we will buy at some point, but, yeah. the, but the reality is I'm doing the same thing that you talked about. It's like, let's build up the investments, yeah. yes. you know, before going, but, but that blows people's minds. Some well, people, even in my own family, you know, people are like, why don't you buy your house yet? I'm like, dude, I own real estate. I don't need to own this place right I now. Mean, you know? I, I think that the good news is um, always trying to, you know, um, fight against these common myths, you know, own your own house, um, put your money in the 401k and stuff. I mean, it's, it, it works for some people, but it's always good to kind of rethink these, you know, miss is, is this, is that the right way to go? And, you know, for a lot of people, they found, no, let's, let's put money more in real estate or let's put money, um, you know, not in a 401k, but in another, uh, uh cash producing asset, no. you know? So there's, Do you guys a think anybody ever got rich just from the house they live in? Is there, um, is there well, a guy on the Forbes list? I don't mean anybody oh, make money oh, on it. Oh, is there anybody no, on the no, Forbes no. list that walks no, in the no, room no, and goes, no, 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 all right, guys, I'm going to tell you how I got rich here. No. I bought my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bought a big can, house. You yeah. can make some money off your house, but you're yeah. not going to get it. You're not, not going to get it. And there's those, you know, esoteric value. You know, you've got a house, a roof, and you've got, if you've got a family, you, of know, course. you want kids, yeah, of security course. and stuff like that. And that's the reason I might buy a house. Yeah. That's the reason why I bought a house. Right. When me and my daughter's mom were together, my, you know, I have a daughter, you know, we were together. I bought it for the family what, What's your daughter's name? Alina. Beautiful little girl. Yeah, I, I, love, I love when people it. put her on the, on the Instagram Thank you. Story. She yeah. knows about real estate, too. She knows uh, about assets smart, and liabilities. Yeah. Smart, we right. got to get her a hat. Eh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love yeah. that. So I bought it for that component. Right. But, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, even if I could go back, you know, if I could go back, I would have took three, 400000 and I would have bought a multifamily. Yeah. And I would have yeah. And I would have used the multifamily. To buy, buy the house. To buy that, yeah. right. Because after a few years, I could refi out of that, make my, you know, make my uh, my profits, keep the asset cash flowing. Yeah. And I could take those proceeds and buy a house if I choose to. So what? I'm not against buying a house. Just do it the right way. So, again, you guys, that same thing with the college degrees. You guys both own houses. If you guys uh, had the opportunity, would you guys sell your houses tomorrow and roll it into uh, investment real estate? Would you sell and rent? I'm not going to sell my house. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm going to do is refinance out of my, Ooh, I'm going to okay. refinance my house. I have a lot of equity in my home. I like that. I'm going to refinance my home and I'm going to buy multifamily real estate. Yeah. And uh, I, I would have to say no, Brandon, <laughs> because it's just one of those things. Um, like you have other people involved, like yeah. my wife and the yeah. kids and stuff. But at some point, <laughs> yes, I'm going to sell and um, rent somewhere. You know, does, does uh, your uh, wife uh, tell you what to do? Right, uh, pretty much. <laughs> and I just say yes, ma'am. She you might know, be watching this, by the way. Yeah, she will be. <laughs> You're like, you got a wife. You know yeah, what the hell's yeah. going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. No, yeah. that makes sense. It's that just about sense. strategizing, man. It's about strategizing, having a game plan. Yeah. Before all of that, get the information, get the knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Because people don't make decisions because they don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But once you get the knowledge and you sit down with your wife or your husband or whoever. And you really put a game plan together, you can see what's the better play to make for yeah. our family. Yeah. For the family. Yeah. So for me, you know, I gotta live at the end of the day, you gotta live somewhere. Of course. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, me personally, I'd rather make I'd rather put the money in my piggy bank at the house than yeah. give it to a, yeah. a, give it to the landlord. The landlord yeah. but the right I'm gonna do it with strategy. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna course. I'm gonna use my equity the to devil's go in the buy. details. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna use that equity to go buy more multifamily and then we'll go from there.
Yeah, well, Juwan, good. there's something else. I know we're going to be running a little tight on, on time here soon, but there's a big something else that I know we really wanted to talk about on here on, on the podcast here is Africa. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. I mean, you're doing some pretty exciting stuff right now. Yeah, and, I, and I would love for you to, to, to dive into that here for a second I because will. you said earlier that, you know, that's where you're from. Um, <clears throat> and, and I just think it's really cool that you are now, if I'm saying it correctly, you know, you're, you're putting together a group of people and you're looking at going – Back to Africa, yes, and and what buying a bunch of land, a bunch of investment properties, or what's what's your thing there? Yeah, so um, as you guys know, as I mentioned, um, I'm I'm African. I'm I was born in Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? That's where I'm from. And you know, any if anyone understands global positioning and what's going on internationally, there is a global um, war and a global like tug of war right now for the continent of Africa. Okay, um, you know. The Chinese are there buying things up. Europeans are there buying things up. Um, everyone. By is the way, there. why is that? Is that because all the natural resources? Yes, I Africa see. is the most wealthiest continent in the world. If, for those who do not know, and another reason why they're doing that is because by the year 2030, the continent of Africa will be home to 70 percent of the world's workforce. So anybody under age 35, 70 percent of them will reside on the continent wow. of Africa. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. So if you know what that means, yeah. you understand the workforce will be it's coming there. out of there. Wow. Plus the natural resources. Right. Wow. Labor, everything. So that's where the money is going. Right. You know the big hedge funds, they know that. I yeah. always say follow the money. So I'm from there, so I understand what's going on. So I'm just trying to encourage people in the diaspora, people of minority descent, and anyone for that matter, to leverage the U.S. dollar. Yeah, we're fortunate to live in America. We're fortunate to be able to have the resources of the American dollar, mm -hmm. but most of us don't know what that does outside of America. Outside, right? yeah, you know what I'm saying. In particular, and what Africa. does it in Africa? I mean, does it trade? Well, you know, Africa is, is. Imagine being able to invest in America 200 years ago. Wow, that's what Africa is right now. Yeah, wow. You know what I mean? The opportunities there are endless. The 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 the, the cost of labor is extremely cheap. So the U.S. dollar goes a lot further, wow. you know what I mean, in any one of those African countries. Yeah. So, you know, my goal is to shed light on that, bring people of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, um, African descent, people who, you know, who don't know what's going on in their, in their home continent, bring them there and also partner with anybody who sees the vision. Sees the vision. So, you, you know what I'm so you're going to go there. Joy. I'll be in Tanzania um, in October. We're doing a real estate retreat in Tanzania. Just to show people the opportunities, right. educate them. We partner with the, um, the, partner, the Department of um, Tourism there. Oh, okay. okay. And some government officials there that are, going, that are welcoming yeah. um, foreign investors like us. And I'm going to talk to you guys about that, too, yeah. off yeah. camera. Yeah, that'd be you cool. Know, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity there. You know, these oceanfront, beautiful oceanfront right. villas right. for a fraction of the cost. Of the cost. Wow. You and is that, is that the type of real estate you guys are looking at? Uh, yeah, I mean, the diff different opportunities, yeah. that type of real estate, uh, oceanfront properties. Is this development or, yeah. or existing Deve property? Development and, the, and, 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 and existing. Okay. Do they have know? apartment buildings there too? Or yes. like we would have here? Yes, I mean, I do. assume they do. I mean, you know, like, no. Like, no. Well, because like I heard someone the other day talking about like the UK, and they're like, there's not really like like apartment buildings the way you would think they're about all, it here. Like, single like, flat. Yeah, it's just yeah. different. So, I mean, yeah. America's so, kind of land of the big apartment buildings. So, the thing is, opportunity. Yeah. Even if they don't have it, you can introduce it. You can it start, right. Because it's growing so tremendously. Right. I, I'm sure that the political environment, local cities and stuff are probably uh, all for this. Yeah, they're welcoming it. They're welcoming it's not, it. It's yeah. not like here where you got to spend three years trying to get someone to say you can break ground on something. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the government yeah. is some, you know, obviously you have to pick the right, the right country and the right yeah. market. But they're welcoming this stuff because wow. they understand what's going on. They understand a global paradigm shift. Yeah, you know what that's I'm saying? interesting. And, and they, and they want to bring the foreign dollars there yeah. because you know at the end of the day it, it builds their country. It, every, up. All boats rise. Everybody wins. Wow. Right. It's exactly. the same thing that happened here 200 years ago. Exactly. You know. So, so Jawan, if somebody wants to get involved with you on that and they want to join the retreat, how, how do they how do they get information about so, that? So um, you can hit me up on um, hit me in my Instagram. I'm very I'm very active on there. It's K I N G underscore w-a-u-n king one let's king go king one you know what I mean send me a send me a DM um, if you know me personally just call me um, but the probably the easiest way to get to me if you don't know me personally is the through gram. Instagram yeah I always check my inboxes and then uh, I'll be glad to share more information with you guys about this uh, opportunity but only like minded individuals you know this is not like little boy little girl stuff 
It's just serious stuff, serious opportunity from real estate and beyond, you know, um, import, export, you know what I mean? Uh, nice. Spices and, you know, wow. just different stuff that you could bring here to America that's very resourceful there. So it's just, you know, a, a plethora of opportunity in these countries, and I'm going to spearhead it for people who are interested and, um, you know, just, you know, get after it together. Yeah. That's Dude, fantastic. That. Juwan, so the last question I want to ask you here is um, where do you see yourself? The, the cliche question, but where, where, where's Juwan in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years? Ooh. Where, where, <laughs> and, and not, not physically where you are. You can tell me that too. I'm assuming you're on a jet, you know, uh, hopefully I'll be there with you, but, but, <laughs> where, <smart> man, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, where are you in life? Uh, how many, let's, let's talk real estate. How many doors do you own? I mean, <clears throat> visualize it. What so is that? 10 let's years, speak it, speak 10 it. years from now, um, the man that you're watching talk right now, I'll have over a thousand units of real estate, you know, um, you know, multifamily buildings. I'll own some with my partners here. I'll own some with other partners that we join, you know, partnerships with. I'll have, you know, tremendous success in the sports agency space, you know, representing major athletes throughout the NBA and, uh, and overseas as well. Um, I'll be, you know, an executive of my music company. We'll have probably two or three successful artists by that time. And then uh, me and my boy John, John, if you're watching this, we'll probably have an uh, energy drink coming out <laughs> real soon. Might be exiting for a billion dollars by that time. There we go. So we'll put Clooney's face yeah. on it. And yeah, I know yeah, that's yeah, going yeah, to yeah. be We need to talk to you on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make sure y'all pin this, uh, this, yeah. uh, this interview right now. Yeah. Oh, all this man. stuff is going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be on a, on a jet somewhere or on a yacht Ooh. somewhere, kicking back, taking portfolios, yeah. and, uh, and continue on teaching and inspiring people to go to be where I'll be at that time. I, I, I don't doubt it. I, I think, Juwan, you're headed in that direction. I, oh, I'm glad you, we all met and just, you know, to be in your stardust. As we, oh, we, it, it's, I mean, you're, <laughs> you're, 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 you, you just, you just, you know, you, you stay creative, Thank you. you find opportunity, and you're not afraid to do it on your own. No. And my hat's off to you, man. Thank you, man. It's man, really, it, really man. a pleasure to meet you. And it's been a pleasure to dive in. I mean, so many things, even after knowing each other for a couple of years now that, that, yeah. You know, you just don't know about someone until you sit down and really yeah. chop it up. So yeah, really, really inspiring story. Yeah, um, thank you. And my hat's off to you, man. Thank I'm, you, man. I'm, I'm glad to call you a friend and, and a partner. 100%. Likewise. Likewise. Yeah. I'm, and, I, and, I, and I'm just so grateful to be working with you guys as well Thanks, on a partnership side because it was definitely a dream of mine to do what I'm doing now. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, like you said, taking those steps, yeah. things happen. Yeah. People say people people. The, the, the harder you work and the braver you become, mm -hmm. the luckier you get. That's exactly That's it. You know what I mean. Right. So if I went, yeah. if I never went on that, uh, you know, that real estate um, convention yeah. or seminar, we wouldn't have, we we wouldn't have, have met. Probably, no. well, yeah. and, and we would have known each other through your wife, yeah. but, but never met. You know, so you got to just take a step sometimes. <laughs> And don't be afraid don't to be fail, afraid. Yeah. you know, and, um, you know, go from there. So that's how I live my life. You know, I'm very courageous and I just keep on moving. That's hey, awesome. I think that deserves a little, yeah. a little. Another cheers, cheers you guys. Yeah, cheers. Cheers to taking the steps. Let's Salute. go. And thank you for coming Thanks, on. Thanks, Juwan. Hope you guys Bye. enjoyed the episode. Thanks for tuning in. High stakes deals. Boom. Let's that's a get wrap. it, baby. Woo. Go. Yeah.